So we are back ladies and gentlemen with table tennis timeout. Let's take a look at how Darko Jorgic was able to beat Tomokazu Harimoto in the round of 16 of Olympic event. What a match, what a surprise. Let's take a timeout and reveal his winning tactics. So, if we want better understand the reasons why the match resulted in that way, at first we have to take a closer look at how both players play and defy the key game areas where the match was decided. Tomokazu Harimoto is known for being very safe in his blocking game. He simply can block a lot of quality topspins back onto the table and makes it hard for the opponent to get past him. And as we already know from our last video, Timo vs Jong, if you missed this video you can find the link in the description. Against these kind of players, being aggressive and having enough power is simply a must. But fortunately for Darko, he has a lot of power. Most of the players are just powerful only with their forehand topspin. But Darko has a lot of power also in his backhand. His backhand is maybe even powerful than his forehand. Could you believe that? So he only had to use his power right against Harimoto and that's exactly what he did. Both guys are backhand dominant players and both are not the best with their forehand, so this was also one of the key game areas where the match would be decided. We all know how Herimoto is strong in backhand to backhand rallies, where he can dominate literally anyone. So how could Darko Jorgic solve this problem? Well, he did two things to overcome this. Firstly, he simply didn't play a lot of these backhand to backhand rallies. He played the rallies as short as possible and he could do that because of his great play in service receive game. But more about that later when we focus on service receive game. And secondly, when Darko got in these rallies, he had a way to get out of there. But how? It was his superb backhand down the line. And also he wasn't afraid to play into Harimoto's forehand just once, but two or even three times in a row. So when Harimoto got the first ball down the line back and he was quickly going back to cover his backhand, Darko played the next ball once again to the forehand and caught Harimoto in opposite movement. Maybe you wonder why other players doesn't use these tactics against Harimoto, why only Darko was so successful with it. It's because Darko has simply very specific backhand technique which allows him to play backhand down the line with so much power. This is just too difficult shot to make for other players. And if you ask yourself what makes Darko's backhand so special, we can make a detailed analysis of Darko's fantastic backhand technique in one of our next video, but you have to ask for it in the comments first, so go ahead. This is the area where Harimoto can normally dominate almost anyone. His game plan is to attack directly with his trademark banana flick from almost anywhere on the table and set immediately the opponent under a lot of pressure. But Darko nullified Hermoto's biggest strength as well and he did that with his backhand serve from the forehand side of the table. The difference with this serve is the bounce, while with normal backhand serve or forehand serve the bounce will go direct or to the backhand more with the forehand serve, if you place yourself to the middle or to the forehand side of the table, you can serve from there and make the ball bounce more to the forehand 
which makes it more difficult for Herimoto to get there with his backhand flick. But only this serve wouldn't be enough, as it isn't a big problem for Herimoto to start his movement earlier and get even this far to forehand. What was really important and very smart from Jorgic is how he mixed it up with his long, fast, heavy backspin serve to backhand where he caught Herimoto moving in the opposite direction. And this forced Herimoto to be late to the ball and because of a lot of backspin in the serve he couldn't attack the ball with power and he only had to spin the ball up or play a long push. And these were the easy balls for Jorkic to go with his full power attacks. And this was truly the last puzzle to Darko's career achievement and it is also the last bit from our tactical analysis. So we hope you enjoyed this timeout and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe our content and see you soon.